gooseberries. There's nothing like a bit of gooseberry pie. So basically gooseberries and red currants and black currants are all very very similar similar fruits. Um, they're of the ribe species and they've been growing for years. They're actually very very easy to grow if you get the circumstances right. Now the reason I like these plants is they're an intermediate forest garden plant. So here I am trying to establish this forest edge area. You know I want to form a bush two three foot tall four foot you know, and just capture the sun's light just before the, the hedgerow um, and some of the other small sort of fruit trees I've got growing in this area. Some of the main uses for these are jams. You can make wine, um, fruit juices. They freeze really well, so they're good in cakes. Um, really, really nice, delightful um, thing to have in the freezer through the winter period, periods. Um, jams and jellies, Christmas time. Now, really, you've got a few options. You can buy, especially some of the gooseberries, um, quite large substantial bushes already um, bare root. What I've done, um, typical thing I always do, is I like to go to the garden centres, I like to pick them up small um, or get plug plants and I like to grow them on. Um, don't ask me why, a little bit of a cheapskate. I like, I, like, I like to do things economical as possible and I'm prepared to take my time with things. Um, I like growing things small, um, let them grow big. Um, you've probably got more chance from establishing like that, but I grew this um, it's a gooseberry actually this one. I know you can probably see the red, red, um, the Himanaki uh, red. It's a, it's a different different type. It's actually a smaller sort of grubbing gooseberry. But um, a really, really nice little plant, you know, and really quite robust. And I don't know if you can see, we've got a lot of fresh growth here and this is ready to just explode. So I've grown it in a two litre pot, um, grown it on. And now we've got, you know, quite a, quite a reasonable size sort of, sort of plant to plant. So um, I'm going to select a bit of ground. It's always good to put a bit of manure, um, fertiliser in the hole, um, break the roots apart um, because, you know, this one, I'm pretty sure this has got quite a, yeah, well, it's not that bad actually, but it's, it's got quite a, quite a good root system growing there. So I'll just try and, when you plant these things, try and tease the, the roots out a little bit. They like that. Um, they also like to be sort of planted a little bit lower in the soil you can just cover the base up a little bit. Um, I don't know why that is. I think, you know, when you watch these guys grow, the roots sort of come up the stem a little bit. So I don't know if that's just that's just a natural thing they like to do. If, if, if you know and I don't, let us know. It does like well-drained fertile soil. So I'm planting this at the top end of the hill where I live, along the hedgerow, uh, maybe about three foot in, trying to get a bit more structure to the forest garden. Some of the things you will get with this, the birds. The birds can be a bit of a problem. Um, as I said, I've got cats here and actually things I've grown in this area, um, they get very, get, very rarely get very, uh, many birds here because there's not a lot of overhead tree cover. But um, I'll give it a shot and I'll see how I get on. Um, I'm gonna try growing some of these in the chicken coop. I don't know if I've said in other videos, I want to grow more things in, chipping, in the chicken coop because it's such a large area. Um, the chickens just annihilate everything in there. Um, I mean, maybe I'd need something a bit taller than this, but. Um, they are quite a robust plant um, and you know they give you they're quite prolific when they get going so we'll see how we get on with this the one thing they can suffer from is something called mild mildew now there are a lot of resistant varieties now maybe you want to look out for that if you are planning on growing some of these so bear that in mind now there is a well-known variety of gooseberry called Invicta I don't know if this is resistant or not um, so bit slap happy I'm gonna chuck her in and see how she does and hopefully that's given you a little bit more of a better idea that's what I know that's the research I've done if you've got any ideas leave a comment you know don't keep it to yourself yep yeah, uh, yep yeah, it's you come on get typing all right now don't forget if you enjoy the videos feel free to like and subscribe for all your latest tips and tricks on how to survive the apocalypse growing your own vegetables, self-sufficiency, and just general gardening. Thank you very much.